Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday to you. Josh is severe weather. We now have potential tropical cyclone four over Cuba with tropical storm watches and warnings posted for portions of the Florida Peninsula. I'm going to talk about what we're looking at here and potential tracks and intensity here from what's still a very uncertain situation. We're probably going to have Tropical Storm Debbie at some point this weekend forming over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Some uncertainty on how much time it will have to form into a depression and then storm. As you can see here, the center is still near Cuba and will be tracking over land through tonight and early tomorrow, emerging into the Florida Straits north of Cuba here later in the day tomorrow and then into a possibility of uh, what could be a pretty quickly strengthening system if it spends enough time organizing over water. There's also a chance that it may be making a landfall here somewhere in western Florida, anywhere from about Naples on northward. The less time it has over that water, the less chance it's going to have to strengthen, um, although it is going to be in a more favorable spot to intensify as it uh, continues tracking northward. Now, some big changes we've seen today. Um, there's a little bit more of a faster forward motion that should bring the system into Florida sometime Sunday or Sunday night, maybe at the very latest Monday morning. Uh, much less guidance showing it going west of Apalachicola, although if this system stalls in here, we still need to keep an eye on that potential scenario, but I think it's a lot less likely. What is uh, becoming more of a concern uh, is uh, more guidance showing this system making its way into the Atlantic and potentially slowing down near the Carolina coastline and getting into a position where it may strengthen over these warmer waters here in very favorable wind conditions aloft, as well as very favorable sea surface temperatures. So we're going to track that for you guys. The rest of the tropics are uh, busier in the eastern Pacific than we've seen yet, but this is the only feature to worry about in the Atlantic. We do have um, this wave that is coming off of Africa that we're going to have to watch here uh, probably in about 10 days, but some time before that becomes a, a concern. Our first hurricane of the Eastern Pacific season is Carlotta. That uh, may strengthen into a stronger Category 2 storm. Another system behind it has a high chance of developing into the storm following it, and then just a very weak system. Here's the official track from our Potential tropical cyclone wind speed 30 miles per hour may become a depression at some point late tonight or tomorrow once it escapes the Cuban coastline to the north here and then has a possibility of strengthening to a stronger tropical storm. Uh, the official forecast showing landfall in the evening on Sunday in about two days here uh, as a stronger tropical storm. Uh, the farther west it gets, the more time it'll have to strengthen, and there's a small chance it becomes even a Category 1 hurricane if it comes farther up towards the Big Bend region. Uh, there's also a chance, though, this system moves into southwest Florida and doesn't have enough time to strengthen much past a lower-end tropical system. National Hurricane Center track uh, brings it back over water into the Atlantic north of Jacksonville on Monday. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty as we get into next week due to the fact that steering currents are going to collapse, allowing the system to slow down. And it may spend quite a bit of time near the coastline here, uh, affecting Georgia and South Carolina and even North Carolina, maybe southeastern Virginia. So I'm going to talk about that here in just a bit. This is the water vapor image, and you can see our cyclone beginning to uh, gradually consolidate. Still two areas of uh, kind of vorticity or, or spin up aloft, and these are still competing. Looks like the southerly one's going to take over, but until this clear central Cuba and heads into this direction, um, there will still be some adjustments in the forecast. Uh, we do see a trough that is moving into the Ohio Valley. That is going to kick eastward here and leave the area on Sunday, and a ridge of high pressure builds in behind it here. Uh, even though we do have some showers and storms moving through the southern end of it, we'll have a ridge building in, and that is going to build north and east next week, uh, creating somewhat of a block as this system heads up in this direction. It gets up into here, and then that high pressure area does start to uh, flex its muscles and creates what's going to be a less favorable environment for the system to escape one way or the other. It's going to maybe potentially get stuck a lot longer. I apologize for the background noise here. Got the cleaning service here. But uh, anyway, we are uh, looking at the infrared right now, showing a very heavy area of showers and storms uh, over southwestern Cuba. You can see that here uh, around Guantanamo Bay and on westward. We also have an area of heavy showers and storms moving into the central Bahamas, uh, and uh, that'll be uh, getting close to Nassau up in here uh, as we get to tonight, but mainly Andros Island, it looks like. So a lot of rain coming here uh, through tonight and early tomorrow across Cuba, the Bahamas, and the western tip of Haiti. 
Here's a look at the visible image. And again, we don't have yet an organization uh, to where we can call this a depression. There's not enough of a closed circulation. But if you do keep an eye on this little twist in here, uh, just uh, into the uh, southwestern coast here of Cuba, you can see that's where the center may try to form here. And we're going to have an aircraft going in this afternoon to see if, in fact, it can find a closed circulation. I will guarantee you that winds are already getting close to tropical storm force, but until this closes off, it is unlikely to be classified a depression. It doesn't mean it won't become one. It just means we're going to have a little bit of delay in seeing that core organization. This is the Cuban radar here from Camagüey, and you can see a very heavy rain crushing the southwestern portion of Cuba as uh, this center tries to form in here and tracks somewhere in here. We'll go over some mountains here tonight in central Cuba, but once it gets past those and moves into this area east of Havana, it will be in a more favorable position to become a depression. And there's a small chance it could become a tropical storm as well. So the official hurricane center forecast has that happening in the morning tomorrow. Uh, tropical storm watch for the Florida Keys in case this tries to become a tropical storm before it gets there tomorrow afternoon and evening. We do have a tropical storm warning, though, for southwest Florida, which may start to see tropical storm conditions later in the day tomorrow and especially tomorrow night. Uh, once we get up past, say, Fort Myers and up into the Tampa Bay region, there's still a little bit more time before this could bring tropical storm conditions in. So right now, a tropical storm watch. I do think that does get upgraded to a warning uh, by tonight as tropical storm conditions could move in early in the day on Sunday. But again, we have... A pretty decent sized cone here that keeps things potentially over water quite a bit longer with a landfall near the Big Bend here on Monday morning, but potentially a landfall early in the morning on Sunday near Naples. So a large part of the coast is going to be um, potentially in this cone and a pretty good difference if you've got a storm that hits like this versus hitting up in here. Because as you guys know, the eastern Gulf is very warm and an extra 12 to 24 hours over this part of the Gulf will give it an opportunity to strengthen. I'm not saying it's likely a hurricane. I know that's kind of been floated around online. I think there's a chance, um, but I think there'll be a better chance as this system leaves and moves into the Atlantic, assuming it doesn't stay over land. And, you know, there's a chance that for some reason it could stay up in here and never have a chance to re-strengthen, just bring a lot of rain into this area. So I'll be monitoring that as well, because obviously the rain is needed, but this may be more than uh, enough rain to break the drought. So this is the uh, key message from the Hurricane Center. Heavy rain, probably our biggest impact. I don't think this is a huge wind problem at this time. Uh, it's not a very big system. It's very disorganized. Could it try to rally and become a hurricane at the end? Certainly, but I think rain is going to be the biggest impact out of this. Coastal flooding, some storm surge as well. Uh, but take a look at some of this rain, maybe eight inches around uh, Tampa and St. Pete. Uh, and several inches of rain as well for the coastal Carolinas. And that is only up until Wednesday. We may not be done by then. There will be some storm surge as this system starts to organize and grow. Usually uh, we see some of that, especially uh, with a storm coming up into here, the right front quadrant of it gets the storm surge. Uh, so people cleaning up from Ian a couple years ago will see some surge. I don't think it'll be quite as much as what we saw with um, Idalia last August, but certainly something to keep an eye on. And now if you look at the guidance, you will see two clear tracks here one um, showing the system moving into western florida maybe as soon as tomorrow night uh, there's another cluster that shows this bending out more into the gulf and spending more time over that warm water moving up towards uh, the big bend region and uh, the model runs that take this here are showing our low kind of forming on the northeastern side of uh, the north coastline of cuba the models that go into here show that formation a little bit farther south and west so the next 24 hours is super critical in where this eventual track goes. Uh, now, there's a lot more clustering here near the Carolina coast, but we do have several solutions that are slowing things down inland as well. So a very uncertain forecast coming up here for the Carolinas. Here's the official forecast from Tomerberg. You can see where all the warmest waters are here, these hatched areas, a lot of warmth, a lot of deep ocean water across this region. So once it escapes Cuba, it will strengthen. These are the ensembles this morning from the European, more tightly clustered, uh, and the average takes it up towards the Big Bend. The GFS ensemble has shifted east some uh, with potential clustering close to or just north of Tampa Bay. Um, but a lot of, again, uncertainty here. Nothing super strong until potentially it emerges into the Atlantic. 
And then our lowest pressures are going to be near the Carolinas and even up into the North Atlantic. And something we do need to keep an eye on in Atlantic Canada late next week as well, if it does make it over water. A lot of uncertainty on model intensity here, but nothing showing a hurricane until 60 hours. Take a look at this spread here. It's still very big. The ship's model uh, is not usually the most accurate, but what I am keeping an eye on are some of these solutions here once it potentially moves off the Florida coast, Georgia coast, and gets into the Atlantic. Um, it does have a chance to strengthen here into a hurricane, hence my official forecast. And you can see, too, the warmest anomalies are in this portion of the Gulf, but we may not see a lot of time spent there. We still have some significantly warmer than average waters here off the East Coast. So, And in fact, all the way up here to the south of Massachusetts over the warm Gulf Stream. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely going to be some uh, some potential to see this uh, strengthen more than maybe what is officially forecast. Here's a look at the upper level pattern. Trough moves into Appalachia tomorrow, then lifts out to the north and east. Um, if it lifts out this fast, this system will find a way to cross Florida and make its way into the Atlantic. Uh, if it sticks around a little bit longer, um, it may uh, get stuck here, unfortunately, um, into more of a northern Florida and Georgia. Right now, a lot of model guidance shows it coming up and then maybe getting stuck until uh, this stronger trough from the Hudson Bay moves down Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. So it may spend a few days here off the southeast coast if you believe the GFS model. And GFS isn't the only model showing that. Here's a look at what tropical models are showing, a very disorganized system on the HALFS model. Strongest winds, though, will be affecting southwestern Florida later tomorrow night. We may see gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour. Tampa Bay could see wind gusts over 50 miles per hour in showers and storms. The HAFS does keep this closer to my track, actually a little farther to the west. And getting close to hurricane strength, spending enough time over water before this landfall early Monday morning, and then weakening quite a bit as it spends time over land in Florida. And the HAFS doesn't have it re-emerging until Wednesday morning, so almost two days spent over land. But there will be that escape route where things can try to re-strengthen here. That's one tropical model. Here's the h -Werf. And uh, it is showing something kind of similar to the halves, except it is bringing the system much farther down the coast into uh, the Bradenton area here in Sarasota and those areas with the strongest winds, maybe even buffeting the Tampa Bay region here uh, as this comes in on Sunday. So quite a difference. Shows the strengthening, but this one's strengthening faster with a track into here. Uh, the, that's the h -Werf. The halves is farther up the coast with the strengthening coming up in here. So we still have those two different potential scenarios right now, and it certainly could go in between the two as well. Looking at the h -Werf, since the system is strengthening at a faster rate um, and spending less time over Florida, it's already back over water by Monday morning. The, the halves had it down here Monday morning. The h -Werf already has it into the Atlantic. So we do need to watch this solution if we're on the coast of South Carolina or North Carolina. You can see it's kind of bouncing around near the coast and kind of stalled. I don't think it strengthens if it's stalled on the coast, but it does dump a lot of rain and bring a prolonged period of nasty weather. So that's another thing we need to watch for. Here's the HMON, very close to what the h Wharf was showing here um, with this system making a second landfall. It looks like near Bald Head Island and Southport here late Monday night, early Tuesday morning, and then spinning and bringing heavy rainfall to coastal eastern North Carolina, maybe Virginia as well. Here's a look at the GFS model real quick brings a weaker system in just south of Tampa Bay and then moves through Orlando and Daytona. And then the chance for it to strengthen increases as it spends more time over the Western Atlantic. And this is showing a category one hurricane that is brushing the coast of North Carolina. Uh, and in fact, moving over Cape Hatteras and Ocracoke on Wednesday before ex exiting stage right to the Northeast. The icon model is a little bit scary. And I don't know if this is going to end up being right. It was overdone with barrel coming into Texas, but not a very strong system coming up through places like Steinhatchee here on Sunday night or Steinhatchee. Um, and then as it uh, crosses Florida and Georgia, it strengthens quickly due to a very favorable upper level pattern. And this system will be on its way to hurricane strength if this is correct. And unfortunately, spending a lot of time near Myrtle Beach and Georgetown and Baldhead Island and even up to Jacksonville, North Carolina. This does have it slowly moving inland into North Carolina all the way into Friday of next week. This is kind of the worst case scenario. Uh, and then the Canadian model is a little bit farther west, showing that bend towards the Big Bend, moving into Georgia and never really making its way back out to sea, staying over the Carolinas, which while not great, because it's going to bring a lot of rain with it, would be more ideal in keeping the system from strengthening. That's the one I'm personally rooting for. Uh, we need the rain, but we don't want a lot of it. 
but we definitely don't need a hurricane moving up the Carolina coast. The European was showing that a little bit earlier today as well, albeit not as strong as the icon in GFS. So if you look at how this will be structured, you'll see there's dry air coming down into the deep south here over the weekend. That may impact the western side of the system. There's a ton of moisture on the eastern side. So the farther this goes offshore, the less likely we get the heavy rain in Georgia and South Carolina. The more it comes inland or the slower it is, the more likely this moisture has a chance to wrap up into it. So that's what I'm watching for you guys. The NAM does show bands of showers and storms moving in tomorrow morning to the Keys, then in the afternoon and night in the South Florida. There could be a couple of tornadoes here, depending on how strong the system gets. More likely bands of gusty showers. And then Sunday, you can see it crosses uh, the Florida Peninsula here. Rain totals are all over the place. Here are the many solutions just over the weekend and lots of rain for Southwest Florida, maybe even Southeastern Florida, potentially three to six inches or more. And this is just through Sunday morning. Um, but yeah, quite a difference there. If we take a look at the global models, um, actually, let me, let me uh, change that for you guys here. You can see the bullseye near Myrtle Beach, according to the Euro AIFS, and a lot of this will be next week. Um, you can see the European is a little farther east with the heaviest rain. Wet in Florida, but wetter for eastern North Carolina. Canadian has the heavier amounts in places like Lumberton and Fayetteville and Greenville, North Carolina, Florence, South Carolina. This would be pretty bad. Um, the GFS, again, is favoring the coast with the heaviest rain. But take a look at some of these numbers, potentially over a foot of rain due to the fact that we have a system that is pretty much stalling out. So we're going to have more on this tomorrow. Again, a lot still to be determined here, a lot of possibilities. Uh, it is not an easy forecast. I don't claim to know it all because I certainly don't. Uh, but you can see we have Hurricane Carlotta strengthening as it moves away from Clarion Island here off the Mexican coast. First Eastern Pacific hurricane, no threat to land. And I'm not going to spend much time talking about it, but maybe it has a shot at getting up to Category 3. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. Please be safe. Um, it is a tax holiday this weekend in South Carolina. Those of you in the Myrtle area with this storm coming up may want to take advantage of that. Again, I'm just recommending that to you. But uh, again, um, I'm praying for everybody's safety. I give all the honor and glory to God and Jesus Christ. I believe he's a great God. He brings joy to all of us. Uh, he brings forgiveness. He doesn't cause the storms to happen. He has created the laws of nature. Um, but it is, uh, in fact, our, our opportunity to take care of each other. Uh, being children of God, to be able to bless each other in the face of these kind of disasters that we just can't control, in my opinion, uh, in my belief. Um, all we control is how we respond, how we take care of each other. And please know that I definitely don't root on strong hurricanes to hit land. It does excite me as a meteorologist, but it is also very awful to see what happens with storms like this. Um, I'm praying that Debbie does not even get even close to that intensity level, but the flooding, I think, is going to be significant depending on where this system ends up landing and where it goes next week. And I'll be tracking all that for you guys. So if you have any prayer requests, I am happy to pray for you. Uh, and please be safe if you are in the track of this potential storm. See you guys tomorrow morning. God bless you.